In this video, I'm going to show you how to animate with a lattice. Not that lattice, but this lattice. So let's get started straight away. Right here, I've got my object that I want to animate. And I'm going to press Shift A and add a lattice. It's kind of invisible right now because it's too small. So I'm going to have to scale it up X, Y, and make sure that it fits into the entire object, like so. Now we can select this object, then select the lattice, Control B, and Lattice Deform. Now if you click on your object and look in the modifier sections, you can see that a lattice has been added as the object. Now what we can do with this lattice is go into edit mode and select the vertice, and now we can deform our object without actually deforming the object itself, but simply using the lattice. Now there's a couple of things you need to know. As you may notice, the object data properties tab has a new symbol now. It's looking like a lattice. And here we have a couple of different options. And I'm going to select the resolution options right here, because right now there's not enough resolution to work with. So I'm going to take all of this and increase the resolution to five. So right now we've got some geometry to work with and we can animate this using shape keys. But before we actually do that, let's make sure that our Z animation is ready because we are going to make a bouncing animation. So let's go to frame one, press I right over here and it will make a keyframe for everything in this field. Now, if you're working with an older version of Blender, you probably have to press I and click on location, rotation and scale. If you want to know what that new option is in 4.1, it's K. So right now, if you press K, you can select location, rotation and scale and that's the way that works. But simply pressing I will make a keyframe for all of these properties in 4.1. Heading over to frame 5, I want this to stay the same. So I'm going to press I once again, then go over to frame 10, G and Z, bring this upwards because it's jumping and then everything has to come down back again, of course. So I'm going to frame 15, take this keyframe and paste it right over there. And now we have a pretty boring looking animation on the Z axis. We have to change this because this doesn't look very professional. And if you haven't worked in the graph editor before, I've got an entire free course on how to model texture and animate a can, which I highly recommend checking out. So press on control tab and we head over to the graph editor straight away. You can also click over here and click on graph editor. Here we have the lattice and it has an object transform. And we want to change the Z location because this is the only location that we actually changed anything on. So I will tick all of these boxes to lock everything else, unlock the Z location, select it right here, press A and dot. And now we have a clear vision of what this looks like. Basically what we want to have happen is that it stays suspended in the air a little bit longer because as it moves upwards, it will slowly decrease its speed until it comes to a standstill and come back. And we actually want to emulate that using the graph editor. You can imagine a person jumping. So let's select all of this. Scale it on the x-axis because this will be the point where it's decelerating, so it's slowing down and then slowly it is falling and gaining back speed. And that's the way it works. So let's see what it looks like. And it already looks a little bit better. Maybe just a little bit more. Yay, and that looks like a happy little jump. Now this object's animation is lacking character. So we are going to give it some more life by animating it like an actual jump. So what would you actually do? Well, you go through your knees, then you give all your power you have stretch out and then as you fall back down you refer to a normal position and that's basically what we want to have happen now that we've got this graph editor part done we can easily see where we need to place our keyframes for this but first we have to make those so let's go back Control tab and go over to this first frame now we need to make three shape keys so the basis looks like this this is our original point where everything will refer back to then on key one we need to change some values and the way to do it is by heading over into edit mode enabling proportional editing by pressing o then i will select all of these s y and bring it outwards just a little bit and i also want to bring it down so i'm going to select the top part increase the size of our proportional editing just make sure it doesn't go through the plane now this is what it looks like our first shape key it's starting to load up it's going through its knees to make the jump and this is totally fine. So now we need to go to shape key number two, go into edit mode, select all of this, S, Y, and stretch it inwards. Now we might also want to stretch it out. So select all of this, S, Z, S, Y. Doesn't matter if it's going through the plane right now because it is going to be animated upwards anyway. And this is what it looks like. So it's stretching out for its powerful jump. Now all we have to do is make some keyframes, then go back into the graph editor to make it look smooth. On the first frame, nothing happens. What we should do is press I on the second value and press I on the first value. And it should both be zero. Then on this keyframe, keyframe number five, we actually want to load up this animation. So from zero to five, it will go through its knees. So that's shape key number one. So let's increase this to one, press I, and now it's already loading up. Now go into shape key number two and give it another keyframe because we want this to be zero at frame five as well. Let's go to frame number 10 and right here it should be stretched out. So increase the value of the number two to one, then go to the first shape key and bring it to zero. Press I, now we've got two keyframes for this as well. And then it should refer to its original position. So these should be zero once again. Press I and I. Now what we can see is that as it reaches the top, it is still in its stretch. But we want it to be stretched a bit 
faster so that it can refer back to normal in these last keyframes. So let's click on Control Tab to go into the graph editor. Close all of this off and open the keyframes right over here. First, we're going to do keyframe one. It is going inwards then it's moving outwards but maybe we want this to be done a bit faster so i'm going to select both of these right mouse click handle type to free and now we can select this handle and make it a bit faster so let's do that then go into the value 2 which is our second keyframe and we want this to be a bit quicker i want it to be stretched over here already and the way i'm going to do it is simply by selecting this changing the handle type to free taking this handle and bringing it upwards and as it reaches the top it is at its maximum stretch is right over here which is correct if we look at the c scale this is our exact dead end so that's why we made this first now we can see whether we are doing everything correctly and as it falls back down it reverts back to its original position let's make a loop out of this so go into the z location unlock it go to the modifiers by the way you can only use the modifiers on single axis like this so you cannot do it for every transform all at once you've got this tab right over here if you do not see this press n go to modifiers add modifier cycles now let's click on this little button next to add modifier called copy f modifiers so now we've got this copied go to the value 2 and paste it same goes for value 1 paste it Let's see what it looks like. Interesting. So this is a pretty funny animation. Now, if you don't think it's jumping high enough, which I find to be the case, I'm going to select the Z location right over here, select this and bring it upwards. So now it will jump a whole lot higher. And that's the way you can actually change this animation in the graph editor. Now this has a whole lot more character, but let's say you want to move it forward. Let's go ahead and do that. So I want to change it on the X location. So I'm heading over into the X location right here, go to frame one and nothing should happen for the first five frames. Then I will press on K, add a location keyframe. Then let's go over here to the top of the Z value, GX, bring it forward, press K, location. Then move five frames further, GX, and bring it over here, K, location. And now that we've got the first animation, we do want it to keep going. So the way we can do that is go over to the modifier, go to cycles, and right now it will repeat the same motion over and over again. And this is not what we want. We want it to move forward each and every time. And the way to do it is to use the after mode right over here. So it's set to repeat motion. We don't want to repeat the motion. We actually want to repeat with offset, which means that right now, let's play this, it is moving forward like a happy little object. And that's the basis of this animation. You can work a bit longer on this. I made this for a tutorial, so I'm not going to fiddle around with all the settings and leave you behind confused. So I'm going to use this one for the animation. And I think it looks pretty cute. So that's the way to make a bounce animation using shape keys with a lattice. So I hope this tutorial was useful for you and that you can see the possibilities of using the lattice. And I will see you in the next one. So if you want to become an undeniable force in the 3D space, then I highly recommend watching this video next.